Hello and welcome back to the Thai League Central podcast. My name is Gian and I'm joining you off the back of a disappointing 3-1 defeat for the Thailand national team against the UAE in World Cup qualifying for the 2022 tournament in Qatar. This result effectively means that we are no longer in contention to qualify for that tournament. And the fallout from these two games, the draw against Indonesia and now the defeat against the UAE, has been quite something to behold. And I'm joined by two regular members of the crew to sort of piece things together and talk about where Thailand goes from here and what we could have done differently and things like that. I'll introduce Ta first. Ta, how are you doing today? Not that good. After last night, couldn't really sleep that much, but I hope you're doing well from the UK. Yeah, I mean, the, the time zone was better. So by the time I got to sleep, I got the, all the anger out already. But yeah, it was a, a, a tough watch, I think, for many of us. Tough result to take because I thought we played better uh, than we did in the first game. But it is what it is. I've also got Ob with me as well. Ob, how are you doing after that result? Annoyed. It was a frustrating game. We showed we could we have the quality, but yeah, overall disappointing results and disappointing performance. Not good. Yeah, and that's pretty much going to be the tone for this whole pod. So I'll I'll go to that first with the most obvious question, which is, what do you think went wrong last night? I thought that we had glimpses uh periods of the game that we we played well and and throughout the the match we were talking in the group chat that hey you know the first 10 minutes we we actually looked like a a team that could cause some trouble for for uae might might have got a a penalty early on that could have changed things but after that again defensive errors it's such a tie dna to concede silly goals in the Asian competition. I am so sick and tired of seeing headers, slips, miss kicks, all that stuff in our penalty box leading to goals. And it was just basically the same thing again last night. The, the first goal, awful header out from, from Supan. I'm not sure if Tom Beer and Supan speak the same language, but they seem like they're on top and pushing each other. And, and again, Caio, the, the Brazilian player, slots one home. And the second goal, a situation where we allowed UAE to, to whip the ball in, the, the Thai defense asleep, getting a basically gifting the Lima open header. Sir Rock could have done better. Second half, shocking substitutions. I know that Supan didn't have a good game. Supan on, I thought would have been a better option than bringing Sadha upon. Uh, Sadha upon again, a threat left back who never played center back before debut at a center back position in an Asian qualifiers game, a game that we had to, to win. And next to him was Ernesto, the man who got the most criticism in that first game. So I, I, I don't understand the substitutions. We do pull one back. Supanat, incredible gem, incredible player. He's going to be an absolute star in the future. He is a, a rising star now. But no clear-cut opportunities. And, and UAE had most of the ball. They had most of the passes going their way, most of the shots. They could have scored their third, their fourth, their fifth goal. Ali Magwood missed an easy wide-open header. After that, they had a few close calls in front of goal as well. So I thought that Thailand could have been down 4-1, 5-1. And then in the end, when you, when you can't equalize, uh, a side with the quality of UAE will make you pay. And I thought 3-1 was a was a fair scoreline. Thailand never looked like winning that game. So I, I thought that in the end, it is what it is. We'll go out. Yeah, I think I, I fully agree that the defense was the main problem. Because when you look at the other phases of play, I thought we pressed really well. I, I don't think I ever see Thailand play with that much intensity. So credit to the, the young players up top who really pushed hard and pressed really well um, for most part of the game. And the link-up play at times was really good between Superchok, Ekonit, and Supernat. And unfortunately, it came to nothing in the end. And they were sort of undermined by the defensive players not doing their job and, and, and falling apart as well. So I'll go to Ob. Uh, do you have the same diagnosis of why it went wrong yesterday? I think I totally agree with that when he said the comments he made about Tom Bia and, and um, Supan Tong Song not speaking the same language. And there's mm-hmm. this funny moment when the camera took a close-up of Narubadin, the right back, and he was, I, I, I read his lips and what he was saying, like, Tom, talk. And that's, <laughs> and that's right after when 
สารัฐยูเอ็น went up for a header and then gifted UAE a golden a golden chance or go to go one one on one with um Siwalak but you know they couldn't convert that chances and I think yeah like Tom I think Mario b i e r he didn't I think it's it's b i e r s fault for most of the defensive error we made last night in my opinion mm-hmm. and against Supan should have done better I hate I hate I agree I hate the slips the The poor clearance header. I'm I'm tired of that, and we should have done better. This game, I think, it's more of Thailand being bad than UAE being good. But look, we don't. I don't think we deserve anything out of that game, even though we showed passion in some sequences of play. Yeah, fair enough. And on the point of center backs. I mean, I think a big problem is confidence because you see Supan at a club level dominating his area, yelling at people, but he doesn't do that at this stage. And for some reason, I don't know why uh, Manuel b i e r Supan was his choice because they they could see the two goals in the one game they played. He has b i e r and Pansa who played two games against Vietnam and Indonesia and conceded zero goals, but he chose not to do that and left Pansa out of the off the bench as well. So I, I don't understand that selection. So did a good up again? Did Nishino get the selection right? And if not, what was the thinking behind his selection? I'm not sure. Okay, to say like if I'm gonna judge if Nishino gets it right or not, we have to first ask the question: What was he trying to do? And mm. I'm guessing he tries to have a defender who knows how to play their way out of the back, because UAE do when they press, they. Do it quite well. They are a really structured side, and Supan is better on the ball compared to Pansa. However, again, Supan, he's not the same Supan at with the national team compared to the Supan at club level. Mm. And I think going back to what Ta said, uh, Sota Po naturally played most of the of the season as a left side in the back this this year because I I commented it on three of Ta FC's game. For one play sport, this season, this season, and I think he's um he's amazing at at the left side and center back. Somehow, mm. even better than than playing left back. And I think when when he came on, he made a horrible mistake. Sat up on, missed time, uh, an interception, and again almost gifted UAE a goal. But his passing was much better than than Supan, mm. and I think that. We kind of reduces the pressure from the other Thai players, and because when when our passing is better, we have more of the ball, and we kind of take a breather a bit, and that works in our favor. So overall, I think Michino got it wrong, but the intention was right. That's mm. what I'm gonna say. Yeah, but if 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 his intention is to play out from the back, right? That's it. I think the difference between Pansa and Supan is marginal in the ball playing, and you can you can ring my homeboy Dr. Pan whenever you want. You know he's there; he's just waiting for you to call him up whenever you want. If you wanted the ball player, uh, I'll go to Ta about more about focusing the attack. Do you think he got the attacking setup correct? And how would you have lined up our attack differently in this game if you were in charge? I thought he got it wrong. I thought he got completely wrong. Why? Why are you playing Ekenit again? Ekenit mm-hmm. was. Second, if not the worst player in the first game, and in this game he was the worst player. Created nothing going forward, missed a, a clear chance to score when when that cutback came in in the first half. About the the lineups first, I have a, another rant I want to go on, but about the lineups <laughs> first. Yeah, feel free to do the rant, man. Yeah, that's what we're no, here for. I I disagree because. Why? Okay, first of all, e k i n i t should not have been starting. You have j e r o n Sakbongkon, the highest mm-hmm, assist mm-hmm. player, the highest assisting player in the Thai league, 23 y e a r s old, off the best season in his career. What else, guys? Please answer this question. What else does j e r o n Sak need to do to start for the national team? 15 e assists is that not enough? Does, does he need to run faster? Does, does he need to kick harder? What does he have to do? For Super Chai up top, what has Super Chai shown this season in the league that 
puts him in that number nine position ahead of Natwood Suksum. Natwood Suksum, 11 goals. Op did a piece on him. The way he shoots it, the way he, you know, runs the lines, the way he smartly gets and creates space for himself in the league against foreign defenders as well, not just Thai defenders. What does Natwood have to do to get in the, the 23? He wasn't even in the 23 again. So the fact that both Natwood and Jerwan Sag were not in the 11, that already in itself it is a reason to to question Nishino and whether he actually goes to Thai League game to, to watch. What is he watching? Like, I mean, the, the, all of us agree. I'm pretty sure everyone agrees on Thai League Central that Jerwan Sang and Natwood deserve a chance to be playing in this competition. He's given both of them a combined zero minutes. So right there, that's that's my my first mini rant on, on the setup. My second part, though, to this is the, the midfield for this one. I, I didn't understand why why he decided to go with, why Nishino decided to go with Salat next to Titipan. I I would have liked for Pitiwat to be in the side. I, I'm a fan of, of Pitiwat. I think he... The player ratings for for the first game, I think Pitiwat did a decent job, and I agree with you guys for this one. But for this this game, Salat and Piti, uh, and and Titipan, I thought neither of them did that well. I'm I'm not too sure why why Titipan got an eight. I, I thought both were around hmm. six and, and seven. Salat maybe should have had a, a five or a four. You know his his header that led to Ali Makbud's one on one chance could have cost the game. And other than that, he just did side to side passes. So. I'm not sure why why he deserves a six. So, the 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 overall lineup, you know, I've already talked about the defense as well. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, th- those are my my issues. The, the overall lineup, I'm just not a fan of it. Well, I think we all agree about Natsuwood and Jura and Sak that that because of the good seasons they've had and because they've never been at this level before, they really seek weapons for us. We could have really called upon them at a crucial time. And I'm very upset that he didn't do it. I mean, that these two players, even if you don't start them off the bench, they're they're lethal. You know, one's a counterattacking expert and one's a, a deadly finisher. Like those are the exact kind of players you need that can change up the game. I think it's not that Nishino doesn't. I think he overthinks it. I think Nishino overthinks everything. He tries to outsmart everybody, and I think it just in an international game you can't take those kind of risks. You know, you just okay. What's my best eleven? You have to. You know, I think that's the issue there. Uh, I'll go to Ab on Titipan's performance because we both agree that he was the best player on the pitch. Uh, and I'll, I'll, since I'm the host, I mean, I'll have to make you justify it. So why why did we give him a good score, Ab? I think he deserves a seven. Okay, but, fine. You and, yeah. and, 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 and is a fine. But like Titipan, the energy he offers against UAE is a massive upgrade from from what what we had against Indonesia. And again. Salat had a horrible game. I think he was below par. He, mm. A player of, of his quality should have done better. But again, it goes back to the same question. What does Nish- Nishino want? I think Nishino wants someone who works hard and Salat does it. He, Salat runs a lot. Um, Is he effective? Is he mm, effective when chasing the ball? No. No, he's not. No. <laughs> yeah, but 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 but, yeah. but he, he does work hard. There's you could see the effort and he can pass and he, he keeps the ball moving and it benefits the, the side. And that's what he wants. It, 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 at the end of the day, do it, it doesn't really matter if we agree or not, but but that's how it exists. And again, I'm not I have to I, I know it sucks for our host when the two opinions agree, and I'm gonna agree with Talao here that Eganit as Super Chai needs to do better. And you, you guys should have known by now, Super Chai was my golden boy. He's tall, doesn't mean he's a number nine. And please stop playing him, him as a number nine. He's not a number nine. And again, Eganit, don't put him on a right wing. Nishino, come read tactic times. Come on, man, and uh, and yeah, I I I hope the <laughs> Rensak, I hope the Rensak and Natawood gets a chance in 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 future tournaments, and the fans I, I like maybe the fact that I wrote about the Rensak and the fact that I wrote about Natawood is a subconsciously a, a a a it's 
subconsciously like telling you that maybe Natawood and and Jaren Sak is my new favorite like golden boy replacing Super Chai and Ekanit, and that's all I'm gonna say. And it's sad. Yeah, and it's the fact that he always reverts to what he knows. When he's in a time of, of, of trouble, he reverts to the players he knows, the system he knows, and that that can work sometimes, but it it can backfire. It certainly, certainly backfired this time. Um, yeah. So with this result, we are out of the running to reach the third round of qualifying for the World Cup. We now will go. I think it's pretty much confirmed that we will go to the third round of AFC qualifying. Because even if we come fourth, we have six points in that ranking. We're we're gonna get through to that. that we, that's for sure, um, for qualifying for the 2023 AFC Championship in China. Of course, in the last World Cup qualifying four years ago, we made it to the last round, um, and this time we have not. So that prompts the obvious question. Do you think we've gone backwards? Uh, I'll go to Tao on this first. Have we been in decline since then? Yeah, well, I tweeted after the game yesterday that... Thailand failing to advance to the third round has shown how much we've we've declined since the end of Zico's reign, and this could be a, a podcast or a debate, an argument for for another time. And I both respect both respect your your opinions. You, you're not both of you aren't the biggest Zico fans, and both of you are you know I guess you you want Nishino to to have more time with with this team, but I, I think that. You, you've been given, uh, if you're Nishino, you've been given uh, a whole range of, of pool of talented players. I know that you don't have the, the best, three, best three players, Tirson, Tirton, and, and Chanatit, but the, the results and, and the way you use the talent and the, the way you lined up and with all the, the in-camp stuff, calling 42 players, staying at the same place is basically advancing to, to the third round of of the Asian stone qualifiers and you fail to do that. It, it's as simple as that. Football is a results game. You, you can have all the talent. You can show signs of improvement. You can play the better football, the safer football, all that you want. You know, the, the stats can be, can be pointing towards a, a trend that, that seems like you're going to be good and building for the future. But if you don't deliver in the biggest stage that, that most high fans want to see, then, then you're declining. It's, as simple as that. So, yeah, I, I've, you can probably guess I've given up hope on on Nishino. I don't think he's the right man for this job. The way he lines up, the the players he's given chances to, um, all that stuff just just shows that he's not he's not fit for the job, and someone else should should step in. And Thailand has declined since the end of Zico's reign. Yeah, uh, Ob, can I expect the rebuttal this time? Or am I going to get another happy, cheery agreement? Does this hear it? <laughs> no. I think, I think, uh, mm, how do I say this? To, bl- to put Thailand's decline on this, you know, is unfair and it's, it's, a, it's a result of, all of our emotional damage, if that makes sense. Because we are so hurt by the results. We say, oh, Nishino, da 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 Oh, the FA, da 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 And regardless of what my opinion of Siko is, my, and my opinion with Siko is, we'll get to that in future episodes for sure, but it's a complicated mm-hmm. one. It's a complicated <laughs> one. Man. Yeah. I think he was, un- he, he meaning Siko was treated unfairly when he left the, the 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 position as a national team manager, however, I think Nishino does well, like for, for what he's done so far. I think he deserves the, the to go on, and and maybe build from this, because I don't Nishino's no because Thailand's current situation is not the result of Nishino's doing, it's the result of the FA. Putting, wasting a year of football development, a year of preparation on Series A. Yes. Yes. That's and that's, that's, that's yeah. Uh, like someone who's a coaching staff, someone with no proven track record, he was just a, um, like, he's just a yes man 
of, and that's the politest word uh, I, I could think of the, at the moment. <laughs> if the FA fought to part ways with Siko in, in an ugly way, it's the FA fault to select a coach without considering the philosophy and to evolve the team. Instead, they, they went with Rayovac, who like like uh, revolutionized the team, so it completely changes the team instead of building on from Siko. So again, we wasted that period of time, two mm. like two or three years, w- without any foundation to to for for Nishino to succeed. So I remember when Nishino came, he had zero friendly match, and that affected the 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 Vietnamese game at home. That's when he had to go safety first, and and we can only really pick up one point from that match. So. Um, yeah, I agree. Is it is the national team in decline in general? Yes, but it's not a big decline to be honest. And mm. I think I think Michino has a good talent pool to work with. I don't agree with him selecting forty two players. That's just crazy. And I think he needs to do better, and he can do better. But we need to support him and find a way to do that. But I do I trust the FA to 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 be able to do that? That's a different question for a different podcast. Yeah, and I'll I'll say this carefully. I mean, over the past week or so, my confidence in Nishino has waned a bit. I will be honest; it has waned a bit. He's not done his his uh, reputation or the confidence in him any favors with these two results. Um, but that being said, I'm opposed to sackings in general. And I think the point Ob makes about serious sack is spot on, which is a, 2019 was a lost year because we were just doing nothing. And if we lose another year, we're in big trouble because we have the Asian Games next year, U23 Championships again next year. And then 2023, we have to make a big impact. I think at that, that tournament in China, we can make a big impact. We can get far in the tournament with the squad we have. And I'll, I'll, uh, one point that Tha made, which, which was correct, which is that, well, Nishino, the squad that he has, there's more depth to it than the squad Zico had. There's a larger talent pool than Zico had. And those are all true. And so I'm going to, you know, make you rebut that point of Taz that you, you didn't rebut it, which is, given that Nishino has a stronger squad, do you agree with that? And if he's done worse with a stronger squad, isn't that a failure compared to Zico? Yeah, that's, I, I, I think so. But then again, you can have a better squad, but you don't have the time to work with it. I mean, there's no friendlies, there's no this and that. You can, it's like a chef with good ingredients, but you, you're not allowed to get in the, in, like to, to get in the kitchen. What are you going to do? Yeah. But again, I don't think, I think all, like all of us, like the three of us is on the same page that we are not satisfied with how the national team is performing, being run and where it's going. Yeah, I and mean, we all we all see the same problems. We we have different solutions. I'll go to Ta for for his closing thoughts on the whole thing, the campaign so far. Uh, do you think the squad will be able to pick themselves up and try to get three points against Malaysia and and do well, uh, or do you think that the defeat has 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 caused problems in the squad psychologically? And do you think that game is still important for our team? Well, I I would love to see Thailand beat Malaysia. Malaysia's Thailand's biggest rival. You never want to to lose against your your biggest rival. So definitely, I think Thailand will be up for it. It's it's an ASEAN clash, and every ASEAN game, nobody wants to lose. So and just a, a bit more on on Nishino is that I I just question his his philosophy and his methods overall since he took over. I know that 2019, like you said, was a lost year. Uh, 75% of that year was just messing around with a, a manager who, who never was fit to, to be the, the head coach of the Thai national team. But Nishino has all this time to, to do research, to decide on his starting lineup, and in the end just picks one of the wackiest starting lineups that nobody in Thailand understands and, and agrees with. And the biggest of Nishino fans will have to say that it's, he's been a failure with, with Thailand if he doesn't beat Malaysia and if he goes 
0 for 3 in these three games because you can't go into a, a tournament with expected nine points and, and come off in the end with less than two in the end. That's Yeah, that's the maximum So that he can get now if, if he doesn't win against Malaysia. So, yeah, closing thoughts. I hope we beat Malaysia, and I hope it all works out. Nishino is a nice guy. He's just not – maybe not the, the right guy to, to coach time, man. Yeah, I think that no matter what, I mean, we – there should be a discussion about his future because the next year and a half for Thailand is super important. And I think we will factor in the Malaysia game uh, in that discussion about his future. And no matter what happens, I hope the right man is in charge um, for the next year and a half. That's very important. So gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me today on this episode of Thailand Central Podcast. We'll be back to look ahead to the Malaysia game later on in the week. Everybody, hope you're enjoying your football. Hope you're all staying safe and see you all next time.